I've had loads of iron brew. How? Well, what, what's loads? Um, at least a pint and a half. Wow. Hi, I'm Ian. He's Ollie. Hi. We're both guys. We're chatting about absolutely bang average films. It's the Guys on Film podcast. Have a break. Have a Kit Kat. I think they're the most average. Right from the off, bar. there's a debate here to be had because that's just wrong. Why? Well, I think they're just average. I mean, you don't hate a Kit Kat, but neither do you. You really love it, especially since they've sort of got rid of the. You know, they had the foil. You could run your finger down. That was the bit of that was the bit of pleasure of a, of a Kit Kat running your finger down the foil. And now You're they're just shopping taking... in the wrong place, mate. You can still get them in that form. Only the two finger format, though. Who's getting a... F- no, you can still get the fours as well. I don't Who's believe you. Who's getting a four? I do not believe you. If you think, if you think they're that average, why are you buying a four-finger one? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, look, I'm, I'm saying average is still fine. I mean, that's, why I, talking- that's what I tell Mandy. <laughs> but um, like, average, average is absolutely fine. Like, there's nothing wrong with average. We've got to get this clear yeah. now. The whole point of this podcast is we're talking about... We've got a few actors on the go. And we're going to try and find the most bang average film they've done. We're not talking about one you love. We're not talking about one you hate. It's pure indifference. You know, you would have a Kit Kat. But if I said, Ian, I'm going down the shop. Do you want anything? You wouldn't say a Kit Kat. <laughs> the thing is, like, I've had... like, uh, Okay, yeah, I wouldn't say, Ollie, get me a Kit Kat. Right, But point proven. I've had nights where I've eaten entire packets of... Kit Kat. So, you know, what does that mean? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so, what else have we got coming up? A twelve pack. That would be twenty four fingers of Kit Kat in one night, one <laughs> sitting. Uh, Ian, you don't know what's coming up on this podcast, so let me tell you. Okay. So we we're actually I'm all ear. we're having a, a reprisal of a quiz that I've previously done for you, and this okay. is an also known as so. You know, I'll give you the title of a film uh, from another place in the world. You know, let's say Spain or Japan, for example. I'll tell you what it's been translated as and you'll tell me what the actual film is. And these are all ones from 2019, so just the year gone. So this is really going to test your knowledge of um, the last year. It's funny that, actually, because I was looking at what um, the average listener to the podcast was. And I've got some stats on that that I can tell you later, but... Um, it's funny because the also known as okay. quizzes came up as the most average seggy one. I don't believe that at all. That's just um, great. No, that sounds that sounds excellent. Not average at all. I'm up for it. Okay, um, we've got our life score, which I'll be talking yep. about uh, some of the films that I've seen, not in yep. any great detail or quality, but I'll be you know I'll be talking <laughs> about them nonetheless. People don't come here for the journalism, Ollie. Good, good job. And then we'll be having our uh, deep dive into the most bang average uh, films of. We've got three actors. We've chosen three actors, um, but it's going to be a surprise. Really. We're going to keep. Two. We're going to keep you on tender hooks until wait, wait, then. Wait, wait. And finally, finally, we've got. Uh, I've got that little quiz that I'll do for you. you know where I give you the first name, and you've got to guess who I'm thinking of. I've got ten, so you get just get ready for that one. I don't want any dilly dallying. Okay. Okay. Should we crack on? Bullshit. Yes, please. Yeah. Let's get the show on the road. Okay. Guys on Bill. Yeah, but guys, we're talking about Bill. It's the Guys on Bill podcast for real. You know what guys talk about Bill. It's the Guys on Bill podcast for real. Um, as you know what this quiz is, but other people might not know. So this is called Also Known As. So if you go on IMDb around the kind of like technical details of the of the film like the budget for example where it was shot there's also a little a little section you can open it up and it's it says also known as and that means in certain areas of the world uh films are called something else like alien for example is called the eighth passenger in spain wow good one yeah that's that's probably one of our favorite ones right uh and we've done this quiz before so i'm going to give you the translated title of a movie that came out in 2019, then you're going to, not dilly-dally, you're going to tell me what you think is is the English title. 
that was released yeah. in the United Kingdom. Are you happy and ready to go? <laughs> yeah, but that isn't what you said before. What's what? the line you've used before? I can't remember. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the first one. In Spain, this film is known as We. But what did we call it? We? Yeah. In Spain? Do you need a spelling of this? Yes, please. W E. <laughs> uh, um, I mean, the actual the actual word is nosotros. I don't know what kind of accent that was, but, uh, I think but anyway, it was a stereotypical one, really. <laughs> yeah, probably edit that out. Uh, but anyway, Ian, I'm going to have to push you. For, I'm going to have to push you for an answer. Was it? Um, hold on, just one second. No. What was the Madonna I, one? That was I said no. W-E? I said no. Dilly dallying. And this is exactly what I expected of you. Why why don't you think of some uh, synonyms of we? Us? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there we go. Nice one. Excellent. Thanks for that. Thanks for the free point. No worries. Uh, Yeah, that was a free point. So should he get it at home? Should he get it? How did you do at home? Oh, well done. Free pointer. Yeah. Okay. uh, So question number two. In Argentina, this was known as Between Knives... And secrets. Between knives and secrets. Yeah. It's a hard game, this, Ollie. Well, who said it was ever going to be easy? New um, year, new difficulty. That's what I say. Okay, give it to me again. Which, which country is it from? Argentina. It doesn't matter because it's translated to English. <laughs> okay. But between knives and secrets. Um. Stuck between a knife and a secret place. <laughs> Jesus. No, but it is between <laughs> knives and secrets. Come on. Come on. The clue's in the title, literally. <laughs> yeah, well, cut. Uh, <laughs> oh, knives out. Knives out. Correct. <laughs> knives out. Uh, also known as Daggers in the Back and <laughs> Secret of the Detective and the House of Blades. Jesus. That I quite like that one. I yeah, like that one. That one actually is a better film that we should make. And um, a murder for dessert is 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 also known as. So, do you like those? Murder a good dessert. Yeah. What's your favourite dessert? Two X roller desserts. Fine. Um, okay. So here we go. In Slovenia, this film was called Duplicate. So, like the sixth day or uh, no? That, that it came out last year, Ian. Oh. <laughs> Have you been in a coma for? You know. What do you mean? You just give me movie titles. You didn't tell me they were all recent, did you? I did. I said they were from 2019. I've said that oh, twice shit. now. Oh, yeah. You can verify it. Okay. Verify. Okay. Uh, sorry, give me it again. Duplicate. Explain to me what a duplicate is. It's a copy. Right. Of something. Sitting. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> feel copy like I'm something. Helping you far too much. Yeah, you are a bit. Okay, I'm struggling. I can I can hear that, and that's why I'm that's why I'm trying to help. Uh, I don't think you've seen this one. I don't think many people saw this one. Surrogates. It was actually Will Smith's Gemini Man. <laughs> oh fuck! Yeah, I mean, yeah. There's a reason I don't remember that one because it looked shite. Okay, agreed. Uh, okay. In Argentina, this one was known as Kings of Asphalt. I'd usually kind of go to a Fast and Furious one. Is it Hobbs and Shaw? It's a good guess, but it's wrong. It's Ford v Ferrari. Oh, yeah. See, I I saw the hype for that, but then I never really kind of knew that it had come out. <laughs> was I'm, that 2019? I'm actually well up for it, yeah. I, I really do want to see it. It's, Ian, it's supposed to be very good. Wow. wow. Is it in cinemas now? No, I think I think it's out of cinemas now. It certainly will okay. be when people can hear this podcast. Yeah, it is, is out there. It is unfortunately out of... It's sped out of cinemas. Final one, are you ready? Uh, well, as ready as it can be. In Estonia, this film was known as Pet Dead. Pet Cemetery. Correct. Bing, bing, bing. Well done. Okay. It was quite an e- that was quite yeah, an, easy, an one. easy one. I should have maybe I should have led with that one, but um, I thought I'd I'd let you know. <laughs> now this this was the Google translation, not not the the you know the proper translation, um, and it took me quite a while to sort of decipher this one. Um, but in Vietnam, the direct Google translation. So again, 
not the official translation, was Spooky Graveyard. What? <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about but that? Where d- so where does the pet part go to then? Well, like I said, it's not a direct translation. Um, and I'd also say that most graveyards are spooky. Fair. A bit, but we've been conditioned to feel spooked out by graveyards, right? By Hollywood. Yeah. Actually, they're a place where you should go and love and show appreciation of generations past. Yeah, agree. Um, Take their Ian, energy so into yourself. You didn't. You didn't do too badly there. Um, you got. You got a few. How did you do at home? Fantastic. That's really good. Oh, fucking nightmare. I thought I was doing bad. <laughs> He's back. Um, okay. So should we move on? Life scores. Life score. How are you? Life score. I'm fine. Thank you. Live score. Out of 10. Live score. Pro- probably like a, th- a four. Ian, how is your life? How is your life? Um, well, it's 2020, isn't it? So already feeling pretty good. Yeah. Uh, just on account of it feeling quite futuristic. Yeah. Um, You're feeling futuristic in, in what sort of way? Like cyberpunk sort of way? Uh, yeah, cyberpunk. That's how I feel. <laughs> yeah, there's what a if... dog. Like, so I was going to talk about You've the fact like have a dog. Yes. Um, but actually, on a related note, there's a dog that goes about the park because in the morning I take our dog out to go for a poo. Pretty early. Who, in the who morning has the poo? Stu- Sorry, you or the dog? We both have it together. Okay. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's the a meal. Ian, it's the only way that they learn, right? I'm taking the dog out for a romantic poo. <laughs> we both enjoyed it very much. Yeah. Um, but just because it's very dark in the morning, um, we only have to go across the road, but uh, some people obviously walk quite far to get to the park. And there's a lady who has a huge Labrador, um, but it's a black lab that can't be really seen unless it's like running underneath uh, street lamps. So okay. she's got a neon... Um, like glow stick around his neck. Oh, I like it. A little rainbow. well cyberpunk, cyberpunk oh, Labrador. That's good. Um, have you got? Have you sort of singled out um, a rival dog owner just yet? <laughs> um, no, but I've singled out a variety of people that, uh, along with my girlfriend, would prefer not to spend too much time talking to. Okay. <laughs> um, the number of people that do want to stop and chat is actually really quite good. But it's weird that it takes a dog to make you feel like you're part of a community. Sure, yeah. <laughs> well, literally nobody wants to talk up until the point you've got a dog on a leash together and you go, oh, your dog's lovely. Uh, but there and are quite is, a few weird people. So first dog's of great. all, can we have a, um, a name and gender reveal? Okay. It's a he. And Correct. his name is Arnold. Correct. Bing, bing, bing. Two points. Yes. Two points. Well done. Um, and we shorten that to Arnie. Arnie, yeah. And have you? Do you shout it down the park, or or is the dog really not sort of allowed off the lead just yet? So no need to call it. Back. No need to do that because he's on the lead most of the time, and um, he's he's pretty good at returning. Actually, we've we've, yeah. we've just started talking at the weekend about um, taking him off the lead in the quiet bits of the park. Um, to start training him for that. But he's only 15 weeks old. So there's a lot to teach him before we do that. Like, just simply not shitting in his own bed. Is that no, he's, he's, he's moved past that as well. He's moved past that, okay. Um, um, he's really good. He can now... I think we spoke uh, on the phone a couple of weeks ago, maybe a week or so ago, and I told you about what he could do. I've already added a bunch of new stuff to the list of the things that Arnie can do. Okay, uh, what bench what? press? Um, no, I'm joking. He can sit, fetch, he'll sit, stay, stay, okay, paw good. both arms, arms or legs, he'll, legs, both okay. sides of his front paws. Um, he'll lie down, and now, just as of tonight, he'll also do a rollover. That's good, it's pretty good and pretty chuffed, actually. Yeah. Um, I mean, very, but, you know, you know, have you, is all of that sort of coaxed with the lure of like bits of sausage and stuff like that? 
or is it a clicker? He is a sausage, mate. What does he want with sausage? <laughs> More sausage. It's like, you know you know where Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, where they have the snake surprise? But it's just more Sausage snakes. Sausage surprise. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Well, yeah, so he's been trained with treats. but the So, like, for example, without a treat, he wouldn't be able to do the rollover because we've still got a few more sort of sessions to get that locked in his brain. Okay. Um, okay, that's locked in. Um, but the other stuff, like sit and stay and paw and stuff like that, he can do without treats now, so... Clever. It's uh, it's all an ongoing process, actually. So, dog's great. Okay. A um, few other different things, but um, just uh, I've decided that one thing that I'm going to do this year as a as a 2020 um, New Year's resolution is read a book a month at least. <laughs> Please, <laughs> why is that? A month. Why is that so hilarious? You're like Tsh, this guy. Um, uh, yeah, how I many mean, books sounds... have you read overall? Me, I've, we've we've yeah. said this before. I've read I've read three books in your life: Jurassic Park, Meg, <laughs> and The Lord of the Rings. <laughs> it's good. It's a good list. I do, I just think you should stop there. It's like <laughs> why why carry on? You've reached the top. <laughs> um. What do you what do you think when you see people with tons of books? I just think, have you read Meg? Because <laughs> they would have stopped. They would have not. Well, they no, would have no. stopped. They would have stopped. So if okay. you, so I mean, any any movie. Oh, actually, things? that's bullshit. That's bullshit because you've also read um, a book that I'm looking at right now called Your Screenplay Sucks. I have, yeah. Oh, look, Ian, it's a character. I'm playing a character that's only read oh. three books, right? I've read more oh, than that. We're seeing behind the curtain now. It's inside I went baseball. to I went to Mallorca last year and I read a book on holiday, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so right now I'm re- similar to the one that you lent me about six or seven years ago. I'm reading something called Screenwriting by Sid Field, which is good so far. I'm okay. enjoying it. Um, and last couple of things. This weekend, I'm going to have a Burns supper with friend of the podcast, Pete Cater, okay. and other friend of the podcast and video cast, Tim Deering. So, uh, <laughs> I Where's take it you're going to be catering for Cater. Someone else is, actually. They're putting on a meal for us. Okay. Um, so, that should be quite nice. Pete is going to attempt in, uh, I assume, Bob Mortimer-style Scottish accent to do a reading or two, and I think I am too. Okay, so we're going sounds to read good. some pit. Poetry in old Scots, um, and then the last thing is I've just literally put it on this evening, but I've got the as far as film news goes, I've got the Blu-ray of Sorcerer. I don't know if you've ever seen that. No. Um, it's a film that I heard quite a lot about, but it's by William Friedkin, who okay. also did uh, Exorcist, Exorcist and Prince Connection. Yeah. So um, it's got mad like sort of mad you know, Damon. The, Mad. <laughs> it's got mad jungle vibes, and it's a bit sort of apocalypse now. It's a bit, you know the, um, well, it's got a, a feel of the Egyptian scenes in The Exorcist and like Indiana Jones, like just, it's got the vibe of seventies film crew in the middle of somewhere that's far too hot for any film crew to really be, and just filming some shooting. Okay. Yeah, and and it looks so. It's basically like these like four people like pushed together by fate who are having to take this cargo through the jungle that could explode at any minute and so it's a bit like speed yeah a little bit yeah they're in a mad jeep um, that looks a little bit mad max style so i'm going to watch that and see how i get on with it but so far first 10 minutes seems pretty good wow okay Um, cool yeah up for that how about you actually sorry i would say i'm a nine doing pretty good that's pretty good how Um, are you I'm I'm good. I'm three lessons deep into a six lesson block of ice skating. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Enjoying That's it. That's cool. Um, uh, Can you, you know, go backwards yet? Week in week one, like I couldn't relax my legs at all. They were just like stiff, and I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't relax. Like I just couldn't untense my legs, and it took the whole forty five minutes to just relax my legs a little enough to move. Week two, 
a lot better. Week three, I can go around the whole jelly. Ring. I can go around the whole ring legs like jelly. They're so in- relaxed, infinitely. And can you stop? I've I've learnt stopping now. Stopping's quite difficult. That that is that's a a, a skill you have to sort of feel for. You kind of have to like sort of push the flat edge of the blade of the skate kind of at an angle in front of you but if you catch it just wrong you're going over you're, you're going over face. do you have that thing where you imagine falling over and your fingers get cut off by someone else's blades a little yeah like i don't enjoy it when people are, are skating too close behind me for that very reason because i'll like go on the floor and then i'll like you know i'll be like sprawled out and my fingers will be out there and then someone will just take them all off so you're kind of halfway towards I'll stopping. I'll be diced. I'll be diced. There'll be so many people behind me. It'll be like that bit out of Resident <laughs> Evil where they get diced by the lasers. Yeah. Be cubes of me all over the place. <laughs> Cube to Johnson. Uh, yeah, but uh, I'm enjoying it. So at some point I'm going to take um, my, my children ice skating and I'll be like, watch this. And they'll be like, Whoa. <laughs> Wow. You're going to skate up to your kids and then turn and do one of those stops where you spray all the ice in their face. <laughs> That's exactly what I want to do, yeah. <laughs> That's like the that. number one goal. Number like one every goal. lesson, every one of the six lessons, yeah, you're just, just the annoying pulling. guy going, when we're learning that side stop thing. Exactly, pulling them aside and just going, look, I don't care about anything else. How do I spray <laughs> the ice up into people's faces? Uh, so that's just it. Get so, me there. So, Giving uh, him backhanders. <laughs> Ten pound down his down his top. <laughs> <laughs> End up with a skin on skin slide instead. <laughs> okay, so uh, um, film, film. Can stuff. you go backwards? Can you go backwards? Not yet, but I feel. Can that's you sit? Coming. Sit. Can you stay? <laughs> <laughs> I can roll over. I mean, I, you can know, you give me a, a paw <laughs> for a bit of sausage. I might. I might. Okay. Uh, what age are you, Ollie? For fuck's sake, shut up. <laughs> um, so anyway, film stuff. I've seen four films, and I'm going to give you a quick instant reaction on each one. So I saw okay. Jojo, Jojo Rabbit. Very good. Affecting, okay, great. emotional, funny, harrowing, doesn't hold back, yet, you know, is entertaining. Okay. 1917. Very good again, uh, uh-huh. harrowing, intense, but not as good as Dunkirk, I didn't think. Okay. Okay? And okay. also yeah. felt that it didn't really need um, the two big stars in it, Benedict Cumberbatch and the other one. Because at that point it felt like a film. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> They've they're reached, they've reached, by their well, they've reached, they've reached the end boss, and it's it's Benedict Cumberbatch. You're like, oh, they've, you know, they've reached the star of the of the film, where everyone else is kind of like unknowns. I felt, I probably, if it was all unknowns, I would have think I'd have. I was just pulled out for that one second, where I was like, oh, that's that's a uh, Doctor Strange, or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. Uh, that's when you pulled out, was it? So, Bad Boys for Life. Uh-huh. Good. Wow. It's like a it's like a nineties film. It's like one of them nineties films they made. Okay. Uh I, I really enjoyed it, Ian. I think you'd quite like it as well. It's 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 action nonsense, it's daft, it's quite funny, it's a bit too cheesy in places, but overall I thought it was very good. In fact I think it might be the best bad boys film. Wow. Uh there is a lad in my office who's Desperate to go and see it, so I'll let him know the information go with him. that you've just passed Ian, on. Go with him. Uh, and finally, I saw Knives out. out. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I loved it. Wow, wow, wow. It's so tightly plotted. Um, I think it's it's near perfect as a wow, wow, wow. as a murder mystery. It's got it all. How do you explain that Star Wars thing then? What the Last Jedi? Yeah. Well, so Let's I, still not get liked, into it. I still bloody liked it, didn't I? So that's good. There's like generally very positive reviews there, apart from that one film that you've compared to Dunkirk. So I suppose like that. Oh it, no, like, I had still, Dunkirk I still... not existed. 
if you'd, you'd have probably thought it was pretty good. I, no, I still, I still thought it was pretty good. I still really enjoyed it. It's, it, it was still fantastic. It was very affecting. Um, Does it live in the shadow of Dunkirk? I, I felt it did a little bit. Um, yeah. It, it was, and and this whole one shot thing was was really well executed as well. The music was really good. The performances were throughout. I mean, I can't I, honestly. That it is a minor niggle that I'm, I'm saying about the Benedict Cumberbatch stuff. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's and also he is very good in it as well. But it was just that throughout the whole film, you've got no stars, no stars, no stars, no stars, no stars. A lister. Yeah. Just. At least Dunkirk had A-listers throughout. That's fair. I get what you're saying. Yeah? Okay, fine. Uh, I thought you were going to try and sort of come back with some sort of rebuttal there. but um, No, I've not seen it yet. We're planning to see it uh, actually on Sunday. So. Yeah, I think, I think Ian, I think you're, you're in for a treat. Um, it's got, you know, tension, drama, you know, great set pieces. It's, it's, it's you know harrowing AF, AF in places. Uh, you know, yeah, very good. Okay. okay. Um, I think I think I'm probably about an eight. My cats can't do any tricks. In but, in one tricks. sentence, what was your holiday like? What holiday? You, one that you read your book on. That was ages ago. It's not worth talking about. <laughs> it's too, it's too, far, too long ago. Um, How was the book? What did you read? I read um, Richard Ayoade on Richard Ayoade. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah because I, I think I, I think you lent it me. Then I got about halfway through it, um, and I was enjoying it. And then I got it again because I wanted to read it all. And yeah, I enjoyed it. It was good. VG, yeah, I liked it. Yeah. Should we get on to the deep dive? Did really they swallow an insight? All that data. Hours, 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 wow, this really is a deep dive. I hope that information was false. So. Ian, we're in oh, the deep. Wait. We're in the deep dive. We're in it. We've, we're in. Okay. We're in the. We're in the submersible. We're deep yep. diving down under the, you know, going down the layers of the ocean, down to the yep. seabed. The air is thick with fart. With with uh, gas. James gases. Cameron's farts. Yep. yep. Protein shake gases. Um, there's a cupboard in there. It's got a little tin, a little tin inside there. Uh huh. It's got some biscuits within, some little biscuits. Oh, excellent! By the looks of it, there's some Kit Kats. Can you imagine uh, that? Well, Ian, what biscuit would you want to see in there? That's your that's, that's the best one that would just make all this kind of gassy, submersible, you know, going on the deep. What would make it worth it? What would be your your absolute god tier biscuit that would be in that tin? Do we have the uh, convenience of being able to make tea to accompany the biscuit? Uh, there is tea making facilities, but only enough for one cup each. <laughs> That's fine. Um, I think like chocolate digestive, um, malted okay. milk, malted milk. Maybe, maybe yeah, or a hobnob, chocolate hobnob. Okay, so that there'd be your top tier ones. Yeah, I'm quite actually overall like I'm quite happy with all you know your biscuit basics. Yeah, I mean just the the, ty- the type know, the that Tesco's or whoever do their own versions, ones that you can rely yeah. on time and time again. The only basics biscuit that I'm not that keen on is like a custard cream because it's ugh, it's just a bit shit, isn't it? Okay. But like uh, a short, short what do they call them? Shortcake biscuit, malted milk, nice biscuits. Yeah, uh, all those sort of basics are all pretty good, really. Okay, and, um, and in that bourbon. inside that tin, what would be the one biscuit that you you open it and you'd be like, right, get me back up to the surface? Just um, absolute dross. Shiters. Shiters, yeah. Um, it's not going in. You, you ain't going in your tea. <laughs> it's quite hard. I don't know, I quite like all biscuits. Oreos, I'm just like, I just think they're overhyped shit. Okay. So probably that. I'd be like, oh, just these? Nah. Okay. I I know that you sent that other official biscuit rankings thing and Oreos so we've got, are at the bottom. So what I'm, what I'm getting at here is that we've we've managed to ascertain 
you know, what's at the top of the biscuit scale here for us? So we're saying like, you know, your malted milks, your shortbread, would you say? Yeah. Um, your di- your chocolate di- digestives. Digestives, yeah. And then down at the bottom of the scale, we're talking Oreos. Yeah, Oreos, um, BN. You know those BN biscuits? BN, BN? No. What are they? Okay, they're just like weird biscuits with a face in them. Oh, yeah. Um, but also any mint biscuit as well. Okay, so like a Viscount or a club. Yeah. Okay. Well, I yeah, mean, that's going to ruin club. a tea, right? Absolutely. The two things do not match. Okay, so in within this tin, there is no <laughs> top-tier biscuit. But you'll be pleased to know that there's also no shite-tier biscuits either. Okay. We've got some slap-bang in the middle. <laughs> We're talking a bourbon. We're talking custard cream. We're talking oh, yes. potentially a digestive. Oh, no, we're talking. So, you know, you're not... It's not like, yes! But it's also not like, oh, for God's sake. It's like, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, fine. Do you know what Do you know what effect um, deep sea diving has on the taste buds? Because no. I know that being in a plane at the high altitude, it... it affect your ability to taste the food in what in what way like heightened or decreased? no dull dulls it i think okay so maybe the lower you go the more tasty everything gets <laughs> i mean that would make sense <laughs> why well because you know <laughs> like opposites <laughs> yeah good great okay so ian um We've got a few actors here. Um, the first one being your dog, Arnold. Um, Schwarzen- Schwarzenegger. And, um, As if four episodes dedicated to his filmography were not quite enough. No, they weren't. We're bringing him back. So what, what we're saying is, is, is first we're just going to clear out the, the top tier and the bottom tier. We, you know, we're going to figure those out almost immediately. And then yeah. we're going to try and figure out which one of his his filmography Lesser. is it's just it's just in the middle it's the digestive biscuit it's the kit kat yeah. it's the it's the ready salted crisp mediocre not very orange, good orange tango yeah 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 i mean you wouldn't yeah, orange buy you, not that good. you wouldn't buy an orange tango would you no it's not as good as fanta even though it does taste more like orange but you wouldn't if if you were at a party <laughs> and there was there was a you know a can there, yeah, you'd you'd nah. be up for it. You'd still have it. No, nah. no, nah. there's no. You're other right. Choice. You're correct. Okay, so the shortbread of of Arnold's career, the malted milks. I'm saying you've got your Commando, your Predator, your T1, and your T2. Is there any more that you'd like to just say? These aren't even in contention for the middle of the road. Bang average. Because they're, they're, they're just too, too good. Too damn good. Uh, so there's Commando. Let's get rid of that. That's too good. Predator. Get rid of that. Um, Running Man. Uh, okay. I that's not a no brain. That's not a no brainser. So Total Recall. Great. Get rid of yep. that. Uh, Terminator 2. You already said. Um, Terminator 1. Okay. Obvs. Right. So. Um, Absolute shiters, so your Oreos. I'm saying Batman and Robin. Yeah. Now, that's actually, <laughs> like, just before we get into the list, right? Because we do have some spare time, right? Um, <laughs> we haven't got that much spare time. We've got three people to get through and another quiz. Just another quiz. Okay. Um, but the thing is, right, like, the I think that what we're trying to get at here is really, truly the worst damning films of their career because like the bad ones actually stand out quite a lot because they are so bad. Okay. Like I, I'd quite happily watch Batman and Robin again for right. the reason that it is fucking terrible. Okay. And I think there's an appeal to that. Would you agree? Or do you think this whole like liking films ironically is, is annoying? Uh, I mean, it's, it's slightly annoying because you, you're not, you're not watching it cause it's a, a, a good film. 
But okay, I don't know. That's I, I, I kind of get. I kind of get what you're saying. It's but the thing is, it's too contentious to be average. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's um, discussion worthy. Yeah. So Terminator Three, it's far too. It, it's it raises far too much ire with people to be considered, you know, average. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about that. Oh, okay. So you free, are you saying that that's one that could potentially fall in the bang average? I think people's opinions have um, dulled over time. When it came out, there was a lot of noise and anger about it, but it was the beginning of a slow lapse in uh, energy about the whole franchise. Film by film, it became less contentious to talk about Terminator films not quite being high enough quality. And it was the start of it. I don't know. I just think it's like not really noteworthy enough. Okay, so we've we've had a we've had a little bit of response from uh, people on the old uh, on Twitter. So I'll, I'll give you some options that people have mentioned that would be, you know, bang average. So first of all, okay. er- Eraser, bad CGI Crocs, James Khan, um, apparently able to go toe to toe with Arnie, which is a good point. Uh, Railguns yes. were mint though. Um, a good palate cleanser for this would be True Lies. So True Lies yeah. is a good one, but Eraser, he's got a mixture of kind of good and bad. I think, um, yeah, True Lies can definitely go from the list because it's good. Yeah. It's a solid good. Okay. Uh, someone um, else says Kindergarten Cops what? with the S there. Uh, a few quotable <laughs> lines, but nothing that stands out that makes me want to watch it again. I disagree. I think it's, it's very watchable. Um, but they every, said they'd go with twins. They'd, they'd go for twins um, too for that very reason. Both movies that put him in an unusual situation, but ultimately are a bit meh. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I think both of them are pretty meh. Okay. Were, are you shocked by that one? A, li- a little bit. I think Kindergarten Cop for me is one that I can watch time and time again. Same with Jingle All the Way, which is another one that's been mentioned here. Uh, so, Saying that, I wanted to watch it at Christmas time and I bought it on a second streaming platform <laughs> <laughs> and then realised I already owned it on another one. Okay. Uh, so, so I guess that's reason last enough to say Heroes that it's, it's one good been mentioned, um, But I think that's quite a controversial one because it's got lofty enough ambitions that it has to, it can't be average by by its very nature. Yeah, I'd agree. I think it's... It's like decent even, enough to pass even that. It's with not, like it's a, not a mint Viscount. It's still, you know, sort of out there enough. It can't be average. Yeah, I would agree. Okay. Um, a lot of people saying Red Heat. As bang average. Bang average. Uh, Red oh, Heat. No, standard, standard 80s action flick. Nothing special, but would still watch it all the way through. That's the thing, is if you'd watch it all the way through, it's not average enough. But you'd eat a whole Kit Kat, right? I mean, you wouldn't just yeah, eat two absolutely. fingers. You'd eat 24. Absolutely. Um, no, I, mean, I think when we start talking about average, we've got to really like, get stuck in here and talk about the ones that you just like, were too meh to bother no, going because back that, to. No, because if it's too... You've got... Average still means that, you know, it's not bad enough to turn it off. You're going you're gonna to make it through once. But you're probably not going to go again. If you haven't watched it all the way through, then it's definitely not average. I think I think you've just said the same thing I have and wrote back to me, right? So, like, um, a good example is I watched uh, Aftermath when it came out. Yeah. Um, basically because it was an Arnie film. I've got no intention of ever watching it again because it was meh. Yeah. Whereas Batman and Robin was terrible. But I'll watch it again because it was terrible. <laughs> okay. So the one the one that I've got down, my pick. My, my pick, pick is is the sixth day. Okay. Uh so I'll give you the official synopsis. Uh, the official synopsis. Futuristic action film about a man who meets a clone of himself and stumbles into a grand conspiracy about clones taking over the world. Um and the reason why I've chose this one is because it's fine for a for a watch, 
but because it's not as good as its concept um you know sort of could be you wouldn't ever watch it again it's not bad but it's it's nowhere near good enough and it's not got that <laughs> many memorable bits in either I think it's difficult. Whereas because... I think Eraser has one or two memorable bits, you know, your luggage and all that sort, you know. Your luggage. I think it's difficult because I have watched The Sixth Day probably about three or four times. <laughs> <laughs> so are you, are, you, are you vetoing that? I would like to veto that. Yeah, The Sixth Day is not that bad. Okay. Um, it's not I, that average, I... sorry. So what I've done is as well, I've, I've gone to great lengths to try and find um, five out of ten reviews. So not oh, one out of ten. Okay, nice movie when don't expect a thing. Um, five out of ten. I expected very much <laughs> from this movie when I heard you can compare this movie with Total Recall, which is a great movie. Well, Sixth Day isn't half as good as Total Recall. The action is pretty basic action, which you see in every movie. The only good part of the movie is that are a couple of good Arnold Schwarzenegger jokes. Overall, this movie is very nice when you don't expect a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. Yeah, great. <laughs> yeah. So is that you giving more evidence that it is bang average? And, and then there was a, a, another 5 out of 10. It says, very ordinary. This movie was not very good. In saying that, it wasn't a bad film, but it was not Arnie at his best. And this, this is what I'm talking about. I wouldn't advise you pay money to see this film. My advice is to wait until it's on TV or until one of your friends has rented it. Verdict, middle of the road. <laughs> until one of your friends has <laughs> rented it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What, this was this was written in 2002. So, so you know. Okay. Times have changed. Absolute peak rental, um, you know, time really. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm going. I'm going sixth. Sixth day is my is my pick. So so the other bang average ones that I'd, I'd had written down were Escape Plan. Uh huh. And Last Stand. But I actually quite like Last Stand, so I'd like to revoke that instantly. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay well, great. Good case. Well made on that one. <laughs> I think End of Days is okay. Yep. Yeah, um, but. When I say okay about an art, I keep I keep coming back to saying it's okay and then to kind of disproving my point. What I mean about an Arnie film when I say it's okay is I think it's great. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is when, about End of Days as well, and like this is what I'm talking about with you know like any kind of flavored biscuit, like an orange biscuit or a mint biscuit, is that at least with End of Days, you know it's not like collateral damage where they were just not really trying anything; they were trying something. And you've got to give them credit for that. And it can't, by very definition, be middle of the road. You know, whether they fail, if they failed, fine. But they did try to make it, make him some sort of like alcoholic, uh, you know, horror film yeah. sort of thing. And, and that has to be applauded, even if they didn't do it well. Sorry, you have to applaud that. <laughs> hey, applaud me now. I think collateral damage is a fair one for that. Although I did have a poster on my wall when I was about 16 that had a very big text quote uh, that came from Jonathan Ross saying it was fantastic. Hmm. Um, so I don't know how much they paid him for that, but he he thought it was definitely more than average. Okay. So I think but we're going to have to... For us, I think we we agree that it's it's average. Yeah. What about um, Maggie? I've not seen it, Ian. But I'd, again, I'd say by by its very nature, it's Arnie in a, a kind of zombie film. It's a bit, you know, quirky in that respect. I don't, I don't feel that that can possibly be average for him. What about uh, Terminator Genesis? That's that's a better shout, but I think it's too contentious with you know some people. Okay. That that they're gonna kick off. My last selection then, killing Gunther. No, that's that's shit too. Come on. No, that that's yeah, definitely don't, shit don't too. Uh, so what, uh, what we what we uh, are, what we homing in on? We've got Sixth Day or Escape Plan or Eraser. I'd want to watch Sixth Day. Yep. Um, 
I wouldn't want to watch Escape Plan. So what does that leave? Eraser. Yeah, actually, it's worse. Oh, I don't know. It's tough. What do you think? What's your thoughts? Oh, Sixth sixth Day. See, I'm quite up for it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh... I actually, I took it off my list when I... uh... When I went through this, I was like, right, we can't be having that. That's too good. <laughs> it's far too good. Red red heat. To... Okay, well, out of nowhere, it's red heat. <laughs> okay, uh, moving on. Oh, and uh, I just wanted to, just so it's not all completely negative. Um, so this year, it seems like he's got a little Western series coming out called Outrider that might be good. Uh-huh. Uh, and also Triplets, uh, a sequel to Twins with the addition of Eddie Murphy in it. And that Eddie Murphy's like kind of, you know, having a bit of a renaissance, isn't he? So Yeah, so it does look like things are getting slightly better for him, even though they've been pretty rough for the past couple of years. Yeah, not for um, the want of trying. Okay, so let's move on. I, so... actually, I actually think, Ollie, I think Eraser is the most bang average. Okay. Is that fair? I think uh, Red yeah. Heat out of nowhere doesn't really make sense. I think um, you Eraser like Sixth Day. You like Sixth Day hours. far too much to for that to be allowed. So it's going to have to be a razor by the by by a technicality. On a technicality, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're moving on to his best friend Sylvester Stallone. <sighs> okay. Yeah. Now I'm instantly chucking these ones off the list. Are you ready? Um, Pop- I'm kind of ready, but I thought that we were just doing Dwayne and Ryan Reynolds, but you've done you've done um, Sylvester Stallone as well. I, so I think, fair enough. I think I think I've accidentally told you that I was doing Dwayne and then did Stallone. <laughs> so I, I can edit this bit, Ian. What what uh-huh. do you do you want to do you want to go for Dwayne and I'll play along? No, do Sylvester and I'll just um, kind of wing it, and then we can do Dwayne as well, and you can wing it. Yeah, but then we've got Ryan Reynolds. And I think that'll be I've funny. done nothing I've done nothing for Ryan Reynolds because I don't respect the man. Okay. Alright, so Ian <laughs> Stallone, I'm taking these ones off the list straight away. So Okay. Copland. Yeah. Rocky one through four, Balboa Correct. and Creed one. Correct. First Blood. Where's Creed two? This could be average. Don't know Could about be. that, but okay. Um, uh, what what do you say next? First blood. First blood. Yeah. Uh, Rambo Correct. four. Ollie, you're missing important Rambo's in there, mate. Okay. Well, you you'll get your chance. Daylight. <laughs> uh, the one I've about the tunnel it. tunnel collapsing uh, and demo man. Yeah, yeah definitely in there. Yeah. So I, I take it from that you're wanting to also add First Blood Part 2. Yeah. Okay, what about First Blood Part 3? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, fine. Uh, worst... they're, all, they're all enjoyable enough to, to move on past. Worst, uh, I'm going with um, Escape Plan 2, Hades. Yeah, that was pretty grim, to be honest. Um, and there is, there is actually... Um, an escape plan three called the extractors I'll give you the official synopsis uh, the official synopsis after security expert ray breslin is hired to rescue the kidnapped daughter of a hong kong tech mogul from a formidable latvian prison <laughs> breslin's girlfriend is also captured um so there's been too many escape plans considering the first was only seven. Yeah, years and ago. you know what? They they um, started filming the third one before the second one had even been released. I, I I guess they were that confident that the second one was such a banger. Yeah. I mean, this guy Get this guy says it. it's, it's better than the four point three out of ten that IMDb suggests it is, which is quite average. Uh, it says it wasn't that bad. It was a basic formula, cheesy but it was entertaining and a good way to kill a bit of time. Turn your mind off and watch for fun. <laughs> Turn your mind off. I love that. Um, a so bad that's... one for me is uh, Grudge Match. 
Have you seen it? Yeah. And is it genuinely bad? Because I had that one on as as a bang average one, one that I, I couldn't imagine too many people could be massively offended by. It's bad enough that if it didn't exist, I'd be happier. I mean, if Kit Kats didn't exist, would you lobby? For them to re-exist. Yeah, like you did with Iron Brew with no sugar in, or whatever it was. Um, no, I just bought it. I just bought it up before um, I couldn't anymore. Yeah. Yeah, no, so I think that's a bad one. Okay. Do you think that's uh, hotly in contention for the Sylvester Stallone Bang Average Award? I think award? it's um, a medium amount of contention. Um, Spy Kids 3D has is, is got to be in the in the bad tier, right? I never saw it, but uh, I mean, it's I just got to be. Did, you know, you, if it was on TV now, you wouldn't watch it. Okay, yeah, I agree with that. Bing. So, <clears throat> I'm I'm saying his kind of bang average might be. I've got a few here. Expendables three. Yeah. Um, Cliffhanger. To be honest, and I would watch Cliffhanger. I wouldn't watch Expendables, so I think Expendables is in the bad list. I, I've just got a question here. Average. Is it that good, aside from an iconic poster? What, Cliffhanger? Yeah. Well, I would give it a watch because I've seen it a couple of times before, but I don't think I've ever watched it start to finish. So I think so you've the seen intrigue... It episodically. Yeah, I think the intrigue of like, was that actually any good? Would make me want to watch it again. I'm keen. Okay, Plus John Lithgow. Uh, and the other, the other one uh, is is again Escape Plan because, you know, it's not terrible, but it's not great. I might watch it again, but you know what? I probably wouldn't. I didn't hate it. Didn't love it. What do you think about Judge Dredd? Is that bad or is it average? I, th- I think it's too contentious for it to be average. Middle of the road. What about Tango and Cash? Great. Okay. Over the top, great. Cobra, great. Yep. Staying Alive? Not not seen it, but... Although, actually, he's only, he's only man on street in that, I've just realised. <laughs> he wrote it, but he's only a man on street in it. Yeah, I mean... Um, you know, it's not really. Be... You can't really say it's a Sylvester Stallone movie. Okay, yeah, I think um, we've covered off most of the ones that need to be in. Oh, what about Backtrace? Did you ever see that? <laughs> no, I didn't. It's got to be in bad. It's got to be in bad. I mean, the reason why I'm saying Expendables three is because the first two were pretty good, um, and I've heard this one was like really watered down. So here's the official synopsis. Uh, Barney augments his team with new blood for a personal battle I think it's Mel Gibson to take down Conrad Stonebanks what? Uh, what? the Expendables co-founder and notorious arms trader who is hell bent on wiping out Barney and every single one of his associates um, Mel Gibson's this, actually the bad guy he's Stonebanks but I've heard so he's that, not the new blood the, the first two were quite violent and then so what I've heard about this one is that it's really toned down. So there's a review here. So again, it's, it's not a great review, but it says it's children friendly. And some of the negatives were Jet Li appeared for five minutes total and doesn't even fight. Oh dear. And it says, um, feels like he was kept in the movie just to lure Asians in to watch it. And he says, yes, I'm an Asian. Um, action scenes are a yawn. Who, sorry, who says yes? I'm uh, an this Asian. this the is comment. the reviewer. This is the reviewer. Right. Um, right. Action scenes are a, yawn, are a yawn. All been there, done that. No suspense whatsoever. It's even worse than a Michael Bay film. Okay. The climax fight was just three minutes tops and was like Stallone bad. wasn't even trying. That sounds bad rather than uh, average. Uh, and finally, um, PG-13 violence. Christmas's yeah. knife stabs are now bloodless and bullets are now made of rubber since nobody bleeds or spurts blood after being fired upon by a minigun. Seriously? Yeah. I actually didn't notice the absence of blood so much, but I watched this. Uh, this is the one where Ronda Rousey became uh, sort of a bigger part of the team. I think she's the new blood. Yeah. Um, I don't Look, think I'd ever want to watch any of the Expendables again. I just didn't like any of the characters. Like, yes, obviously the characters are just the actors. But um, 
there's just not enough going on in it to make you go, all right, I get who any of these people are. What about Cobra? It's like too it. good, isn't it? It's too good. Leathery. Yeah, I'm saying escape plan. Okay. Maybe on this one we have to just call a truce and ask somebody to tell us if they've got anything more average than escape plan. Okay, agreed. Um, so, Ian, do you want to just quickly run me through your, your uh, Dwayne Johnson thoughts? My, my got... Johnsons. Um, yeah. yeah, just quickly, though, a couple of different things. Um, do you know what the average height in the UK is? Average height, I'd say 5'7". What are you? About that. It's 5'9". Is it? I'm just under. Yeah. Yeah. Um, average time in a job in the UK. Do you know what that would be? Mm. Three years? 4.6, actually. It's quite high. Okay. Um, I've got a definition of the median versus average. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, but I also got a chart. I've got... I've got a page open that's um, that's called it's about the population of cats per household. <laughs> God's sake! Um, do you know um, what the average number of cats per household in the West Midlands is? I mean, surely I've completely spiked the uh, results somewhat. Well, are you West or East Midlands? West. West. Oh, okay. Funnily enough, the East Midlands is beating you out. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm saying it's probably two. Two cats in yeah. e- East or West? West, West. So it's 1.6 cats per household in the West Midlands. Okay. And the East beats it by one, uh, sorry, by 0.2 with 1.8. Ah, okay. Um, Fine. So there you go. Maybe it's because my cats generally don't have all their legs. What they don't con- contribute to the averages, yeah. Um, and a like little a bit fun. about our average listener that I found on our um, stats website for the podcast. Yeah. So the average listener is in the USA. Okay. Has definitely listened to the movie pub quiz episode. Okay. Um, they use Apple Podcasts or iTunes to uh, listen to the podcast. Oh, granddad. Um, prefers Ian to Ollie and is a dog person rather than a cat person ah, you've made these this up um, so that's it that's fact so let's go on to Dwayne Johnson go on um, so <clears throat> couple of should I start I mean, with the obvious sky, good ones it's got to be Skyscraper the most average yeah I never saw it but that's because I was just kind of underwhelmed by what it was going to be yeah, I mean it's not it's not horrible, but it's not brilliant. It's got to be skyscraper. I won't have it any other way. Uh, okay, so in bad, I've got doom. Okay, agree. Uh, I've got. Let's just go through them. Scorpion King. That's not average. It's slightly better than average, I'd say. Uh, Welcome to the jungle is pretty good. Uh, Southland Tales. Did you ever see that? I think that's pretty average, to be honest. I think that could be a contender. Right. Uh, A real contender. Be cool. That was all right. Uh, Doom, bad. Gridiron Gang, pretty good. Game plan. Never saw it, but that was like a Disney one, right? Yeah. But it was still good, though. Okay. Get Smart. Fine, I guess. Yeah, Race to Witch Mountain and Tooth Fairy, the other guys, these are all fine. I'd say, but I'd still say Race to Witch Mountain. I mean, I know it generated a couple of memes and, and that, but I, I still think that that's a good contender for a bang average one. Pretty average, okay, that's cool. That's in the list then. South and Tales and Race to Witch Mountain are pretty average. Um, and then there was this sort of time period between sort of like late noughties and early 2010s where I think he had like a sort of shiter period <laughs> go on um, and by shiter I mean like sort of meh average so he had fig things... rolls that kind of thing Oreo fig roll yeah so he had things like Fast Five and Journey 2 which were like kind of the big box office ones but mixed in were yeah. Snitch and yeah. Faster Faster yeah and that's pretty 
dull. That's like, like they're the very sort of thing generic that, films. Yeah, generic films. Yeah, they're probably quite. But are they are they good shouts for bang average? Because one of those is going to be okay, but it's not. Do you know what I mean? I'm sure one of but, those is probably fine. I've seen both, and I don't remember enough about either. Right. Does that mean they're bad, or does that mean they're average? Mm, it's a good point. G.I. Joe Retaliation, I think, was bad enough to make it bad. Yeah. Another one of which I think sits in the faster and snitch category is Empire State with Liam Hemsworth. Okay. That's pretty brutally average. Then you've got Pain and Gain, and everything really improves from this point where they're all pretty good up until okay. Skyscraper. So you've got... Uh, Fast and Furious, a couple thrown in there, like three or four Fast and Furious films. Hercules, pretty decent. San Andreas, pretty good. Baywatch, you know. Uh, Moana, good. Oh, good. Jumanji, yeah. Welcome to the Jungle. I like oh, that. Rewatched yeah. it recently, thought it was good. Yeah. I, th- I actually think Rampage is pretty dull. You saw it in 4DX as well. How can that? How can that have been dull? I mean, you were being sprayed in the face. There was smells. Yeah, but would I do it again? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I think you're right. Skyscrapers in there. Okay. Fighting my, with my family was pretty shit. To be oh honest. no, I liked it. I thought it was very Did funny. You? Yeah, I liked it. But he wasn't. Was he in it enough? It wasn't really a. a a vehicle for him was it it wasn't really a Dwayne film no okay so in the average list we've got I mean, I'd, I'd probably just Tales. say Skyscraper because it, I mean it. because it, you said out, it <laughs> I'm sticking with with Skyscraper um, just for the reason that it sort of came out it, it did okay but you know it was a bit Dwayne overkill at that point didn't need to be made I think I can get behind that can you hear me okay? Uh, I can now. Now you're talking, yeah. Yeah, okay, so I'm agreeing with you on that. Good point, well made. Finally, Ian. Ollie. We've got your favourite, Ryan Reynolds. <sighs> uh-huh. uh, so I'm going to quickly run through what I think, you know, a fine. So that would be Deadpool 1. A lot of people like it. You know, it's entered popular culture. Um, I enjoyed Hitman's Bodyguard. I thought that was fine, uh, despite you know sort of f- uh, filming what was supposed to be my uh, my city of Coventry um, and making it look. Where like, did they? Where did they actually film it then? Like London. Okay, great. Uh, and I thought Buried was okay as well. I think Buried's probably my favourite one of his. Okay, uh, worst. You know, people hate Green Lantern. Um, and R.I.P.D. I think they don't like that one. Um, yeah. But Ian, I've got a question for you. Yeah. Do you like explosive action scenes with slow mo focused on blood, peppered with sex scenes, and all the songs by Muse? Up until the Muse bit, I thought you were talking about Deadpool. Are you fine with no plot whatsoever and not so subtle product placement? No. Uh, then you probably wouldn't like Six Underground, the Michael Bay Netflix (laughs) movie. Um, Okay. Yeah, definitely wouldn't. uh, From a review, this is not for you then. Um, I can see a 13-year-old kid enjoying all the guns, destruction, blood and sexy ladies, but that's all this movie has. No plot and any jokes just fall flat. One out of ten. Yeah, pretty bad. Um, Does does this um, pique your interest if I... You know, if I... uh, tell you what what you might be watching in it so uh, in the parents guide in the sex and nudity so multiple sex scenes throughout ranging from mild to highly moderate what What? yeah okay Uh, Um, no no front nudity shown um around the 50th minute mark i mean not that this this person was counting or anything a man is shown thrusting into a woman from behind where sexual noises are heard uh, yeah. the, uh, the conversations within this scene have explicit sexual and vulgar language. Interested yet? No. Right. Okay, I'm going to take it up a notch. So this is in the violence. So severe graphic violence throughout. 
frequent headshots, blood splatter scenes, grenade and bomb explosions, limb dismembered, eyes taken out of sockets, grenade in man's mouth resulting in head explosion, which is extremely graphic, people okay, being run over in cars, limbs snapping, gunshots to eyes, head, mouth, throat, chest, backs, legs, <laughs> arms and kneecaps, knife wounds in hands, head, mouth and chest, fist fights, Heavy bruising, open wounds and suicide scenes. People set on fire oh, and Jesus. lacerations to body are clearly shown. People thrown off tall buildings and splattering on the ground. Gore factor extreme. Wow. I was up for almost all of that, but then you hit suicides. And it, out of context, it seems pretty grim. But even in context, if it's Michael Bay that's in charge, that's pretty grim. Ian, I, I did watch this film and I... I'd, I'd read a lot of people saying that this was some sort of endurance test as to whether you can get through it or not. Um, uh-huh. A lot of my friends made it to like five, ten, maybe 30 minutes and no more. I did watch the whole film and, and you know that I don't mind the odd Michael Big Bay man. movie, but it was absolutely awful. One of the worst things I've seen. Yeah, okay. I mean... Ollie, I just avoid Michael Bay and Ryan Reynolds, really, as a general rule of thumb. So for me, I don't think any of his stuff's bang average. I think I liked Buried, and then I think everything else I could give a wide berth. Fine. Okay. Uh, Ian, we've got to end now, so I'm just going to give you uh, the final we've quiz. got to end. You ready? <laughs> we should wrap this up, so let's begin the final quiz. Okay, so I'm just going to give you the first name and then you're going to give me the surname. Okay, and I've just... The first thing to come to mind. Yeah, no (coughs) dilly-dallying. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Ryan. Reynolds. Correct. Jeff. Goldblum. Correct. Kevin. Costner. Hart. Emma. (sighs) Stone. Correct. Michael. Bay. J. Fox. Karen. (laughs) Uh, Gillen. Correct. Finn. Oh, I was going to say a wrestler's name there. Finn, I don't know. Wolfhard. Sure. Okay. Stranger things. Chris. Pine. Tucker. Gary. Oldman. Correct. Adam. I keep thinking of wrestler's name. Adam (laughs) Driver. Sandler. Stanler. <laughs> Sandler. <laughs> that sounded like you said Stanler. <laughs> Adam did, Stanler. I think you did pretty well there. You oh, got, was that the last one? Yeah, you got one, two, three, four, five. Five out of ten. <laughs> That's not bad. I love that it's just marked on whether or not I thought the same thing as you. <laughs> uh, okay, great. Well, that's um, been highly enjoyable and probably the best bit of the podcast again. Um, Thank you for listening, everybody. If you'd like to know how to speak to us, then what I'm about to say will be all you need to know. Um, You can get a hold of us on uh, Twitter at GOF Podcast. You can email us at guysonfilmpodcast at gmail.com. Correct. It's been a while. And then you can speak to us on Facebook. It's just facebook.com forward slash guys on film. Um, and really, what we want to know is whether or not we get these bang averages right. In particular, I wasn't really happy with the Sylvester Stallone one. I don't think we... We just landed on escape plan, but I feel like there's one that's more average than that. Okay. Uh, that implies that we'd want to watch escape plan for Arnie but we'd avoid it. No. Oh, it's so confusing. See you next time. Bye! Bye.